Well, good afternoon from Washington State. We got the Pacific Ocean is right there. We got the Olympic National Park right there. And we got us an old international dump truck right here that we're towing up to um, Nia Bay, Washington, which is the very most northwestern corner of the United States. So uh, I'm kind of starting this video near the end of the trip because we just got to go up the coaster a little farther, go inland a ways, up another hour, and then we're there. But uh, nice view here to stop and check out and take a break for a bit along the coast. And uh, oh, there's an island out there. That's cool. So this dump truck, um, it got sold. Someone up uh, up north bought it, and I got hired to tow it up there. So I went over to Sweet Home, Oregon this morning. Uh, picked this thing up, got all hooked up to it. I didn't film any of that because it was pouring down rain, muddy mess where it was. I just wanted to get it done and over with. But we've got, you know, like the normal. Well, let me turn you around. There we go. Um, just fork the axle between the U-bolts like normal. Strapped it down, safety chains. That airline over there is supplying the truck with air. This airline, 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 I can't even talk airline right here is activating the brakes on this truck when i hit my brakes on this truck uh, we've got the drive shaft pulled out of in there and tied up off to the side and then we've got our tow light on the back here that we need to check the battery level on which is still two-thirds after a whole lot of driving hey stay and uh yeah, luckily this truck uh, got brand new tires on it. Some big old meaty gnarly ones here. Um, so, real good to tow. It's actually a pretty nice old truck. Uh, 1991 International 9300. Got a Cummins in it. 13 speed, I think, is what it was. And uh, then we got my dirty mess of a truck here. So, since we're in such a nice spot, and now that uh, the sun's coming out on that island over there, I'm seeing that there's a lighthouse on it, so that's pretty cool. Um, this particular truck I'm towing right now was a good one to uh, stop and hit some scales with because I've towed a lot of heavier stuff with this Zach lift here in my truck, but I haven't been able to go cross actual like scales uh, with the heavier load on it to see how well this short truck weight transfers because Yes, this is a very long truck for a truck truck, but it's a very short truck for a tow truck. And since tow trucks are teeter-totters, uh, that is your pivot point is dead center between those axles. So you have all that right there prying down, wants to pull up on the front. So the longer it is, the better it holds its own front end weight down. The shorter it is, the more weight it transfers to the drive axles. Now this truck coincidentally uh, has the drive axles at the very, very back of the truck. So all the way to the steel bed, some of the crud that's still left in the front of it, the cab, that Cummins engine, all that stuff. Uh, those axles being all the way back is throwing all that weight forward onto this front end. And I have it reached all the way out and picked up by the front axle, not by the leaf springs or the or an Iver tool or anything like that. So I'm reached out to grab it. It's throwing a whole lot of its own weight forward. So good one to actually scale and see where we're at here. Yeah, look at that view. It's so nice out here. Um, anyway, we are 38,600 pounds on the drive axles and still just over 8,000 pounds on the steer axle. We got it weight on the scales there. Uh, that's really good because up here in Washington state, my, uh, annual permits for towing give me 43,000 on the drive axle. So I'm way under that in Oregon. I'm allowed 46,000 on the drive axles again, way under that in California. Um, you can get the permits, towing permits that allow you 46,000 right here, just like Oregon does. But then you got to have a whole vehicle inspection done by Caltrans. And I just wanted the permits without having to take the truck down and get a whole inspection done uh, where they measure everything out and all this crap. So I just ordered green weight permits instead of purple weight permits, which gives you uh, 40,000 and some change right here. And I was a little worried that, you know, a heavier front ended truck might put me over that 40,000 here, but this is pretty heavy on the front end for a bobtail truck to be towing, like something I would be doing a long distance thing like that. And I'm well under what even my California permits would be. So that makes me happy. 
So you're probably wondering, yeah, I'm not going to walk down that trail. That's uh, that's steep. Uh, you're probably wondering why I'm towing it and not hauling it on the low bed when I said the low bed was for exactly this type of long distance thing. Uh, I'm going to keep you facing that way, seeing the view, not looking at my face. Uh, but the low bed is for doing this long distance stuff so that I can haul something back and get money on the way back home too. Um, I thought I had a load lined up to go back home. It seemed like it was all good. Well, then I'd pull the Zach lift off, uh, hook the low bed up and uh, haul this on the low bed. And then when I got this dropped off up there by Canada, I could run across the top of the country, come down I-5, pick up the load, haul it back down I-5 into Oregon. But yesterday afternoon that, all, that load kind of fell through. I didn't have time to look for another one. So I just left the Zach lift hooked up and now this is uh, about 20,000 less pounds I'm dragging around because I don't have the weight of the trailer under there. So huh, that helps. Now speaking of weights, uh, legal weight on the, t on the drive axles like this, uh, 34,000 pounds is what's legal to put on here. Like I said, I have annual permits for Oregon, Washington, and California that allow me to go beyond that when I'm towing. And uh, I also have permits for Oregon and California for my low bed. I don't have any for Washington yet. Um, haven't had a need. But uh, a lot of people use detachable uh, tow units for their light weight so that they can scale something like this without being overweight on their drive axles and they don't need permits to haul interstate through all the states. But the Genesis is heavy. It's, it's not made to be that. There's like the Miller DTU, the NRC Quick Swap, some others. They're super lightweight because they're not a wrecker. All they do is tow. Some have a winch on them that just sits in one spot on the back of the truck there. It doesn't, no boom, no nothing like that. But they're really lightweight. As you can see, I'm just over 4,000 pounds um, overweight on my drives. And you can easily save that by getting rid of all of this, which is what most of those other ones do. But for the Genesis, that's not its purpose. And that's not how you need to think of it. If, if you're wanting a quick detached tow unit, uh, for the lightweight to be able to legally scale loads and go wherever you want in the country without having to worry about permits, not the unit for you. The, the reason for the Genesis is it is a full-on wrecker with full extendable twin line recovery boom, 30 ton boom that can be detached and then you can go use your truck for other things and your truck isn't tied to one income source, but yet you still have a full-on wrecker. With as expensive as trucks are getting nowadays and insurance on trucks and all insurance tens of thousands of dollars a year for a truck, uh, it's making more and more sense to not tie your truck up to one single in income source. But this right here means you're not limiting yourself to what you're able to do as far as a wrecker at the same time. So that's, that's more of the idea behind this. If you want lightweight legally scale, the Zach lift fifth wheeler, like the, the 353 or one of those would be the way to go for doing that interstate stuff because that is by far the lightest of all the detachable tow units. It, it's not gonna have an extendable boom. It's not gonna have all this big fancy stuff up here. It's gonna have an underreach rated just as much as this one. And it's gonna be the most lightweight thing out there where you can pick up all these trucks by the front end, even way heavier than this. Legally scale your weights no problem and run all over the country without needing permits. So. Uh, very different purpose than what most detachable tow units uh, are for, what most people use them for. But like I said, now that things in trucks and insurance are getting so expensive, it's making less and less sense to tie your truck to just one income source. Okay, we got us a nice little break here. I'm sure that sun is totally blowing out the nice view of the water there. But um, we start rolling again. Like I said, it, it would have been really nice to get that other load going back and have that work out and then uh, make money going back home too, but uh, I, I charge enough for this that I can do the whole round trip just fine. Like that's what I charge for. So the money going back is bonus money, still nice, but if I'm not going to get that, it doesn't make sense to bring the trailer and, uh, you know, put miles on eight extra tires and drag another I don't know if that thing weighs. I think it's 18,000 pounds the whole way with you. So this is lighter, easier, faster. On the way home, I don't have the truck on the back. It'd be easier to pull in somewhere and get something to eat or something like that. Uh, it was nice. Uh, you probably see a whole bunch of junk in my sleeper back there. 
Uh, my wife and daughter made some chocolate chip cookies, and uh, my wife packed me a whole um, snack kit for this trip, so I haven't had to stop anywhere and eat anything the whole way. Just been snacking and going, and really handy. So, uh, there goes your view of the coast. Oh, also, new seats on uh, both sides of the truck. I got the, what are they, Legacy, Ultra Series, whatever super fancy super expensive seats uh but we upgraded that we got these put in a couple days ago uh, i did it to both sides i got the fancy also air ride seat for the other side too uh we had to run an airline over there to feed that seat because there, there was an air over the other side but we got all that done a million times more comfortable especially on a long trip like this so uh this was this was a, a expensive upgrade i think it was three thousand for the two seats but um a worth it upgrade uh, to make it not sore on a long trip. So uh, there's the waters back. So I'm gonna keep driving and when I see something cool, you'll see it too. Well, there it goes. Dropped off, done. Very happy customer. Turbo sounds good. Just a little bit of injector smoke, no big deal. But uh, we didn't go all the way to Nia Bay, which is the corner of the U.S. It's, it's not like 15 miles up there. Uh, I guess it's all narrow, twisty road, so he just met us here in, what does it say? Well, Lamb Bay. Okay, there is no way we could be this close without coming up here and checking out the view. Uh, that was really nice of him to meet us down at the gas station. Not up there, on uh, the point up there is where it's going. That is the actual corner of the United States, not this big one, the little one just out there. But I guess it's tight, twisty road up there, so they said so they meet us down there at the gas station but I still had to come up and see it. This is uh, Nia Bay, is right around the corner in there, I believe. This is Clalam Bay, I think is how you say it. That's not how you say it, whatever. Uh, that is all Canada right there. That's the Pacific Ocean. Cor northwest corner of the United States, southwestern corner of Canada. Pretty freaking cool. And quite the view here. All right, well, we're going to pull out of here. We got to go find a place to camp. Um, truck did great all the way up here. Very, very happy with it. Um, there was a few videos back, whatever, where it uh, did a regen after idling all night long in sub-zero temperatures. Big surprise. And then in another video not too long later, I did a parked regen um, again. And then in another video after that that is already filmed and uploaded, just not live yet at the time I'm filming this. So you guys haven't seen that yet, but by the time you see this, you will have. And I know there'll be more comments about it. Uh, there was a check engine light on. And after the first two regen, parked regens, there was a bunch of comments about, man, that truck's always going into regen. Something's up with it, something's wrong. And there's, there's not, it's fine. And I know the check engine light in the future video that you guys have already seen by the time you see this, uh, will bring more of those comments. Nothing wrong with the truck. Uh, in the entire time I've owned it, it has had to do uh, uh, two parked regens. And one of those I chose to do because I was on my way up to a ski resort at the top of the mountain in a snowstorm. And I, when it was giving me the, the regen needed light, I wanted to make sure that the regen is all that it needed before I went up to a ski resort at the top of the mountain in a snowstorm. So I chose to park it, especially since in that, that load and what I was doing, it was going to be unlikely that the truck was going to meet the required conditions to do a rolling regen. So in all reality, two regens in the time, parked regens in the time I've owned it, with the type of work this truck does that is very hard on the emission system, I don't feel like that's that bad. Uh, you got to remember this truck, 
a lot of times, especially during the winter when the temperatures are colder, which is hardest on emission systems, um, this truck usually drives somewhere empty, spends a whole bunch of time on site idling, doing the job, and then drives back home empty. It never gets a load put on the engine, it never heats up, therefore it can never effectively run its emission system. And I am very surprised that it has not had more emissions problems because of that. Uh, and, and the people about when I idle it, uh, two nights I've idled it overnight. Um, and then while I'm idling on you know, jobs and stuff like that, yes, I idle it up to 900 RPM because that's as high as it will let me set the idle on the cruise control, but I never idle it at idle. It's always up at like 900 RPM uh, just because that's as high as it'll go. I'd like it to go like 1,000, 1,100, but whatever, close enough. So. Uh, the check engine light on this truck, that light came on when it needed the, the second parked regen. And after doing the regen, the regen light or the DPF filter light went off. The check engine light did not. It stayed on for two more heat cycles of the engine of running, cool down, running, cool down. And then it shut itself off. And in addition to that, I bought the computer program for this truck, uh, for this Detroit engine so that I can plug into it and, uh, read codes, clear codes if needed, and do forced regens if I ever come across the need to do so. So now I can read all the code computer stuff of this truck as well. So that should be handy. Well, it is the next morning. Uh, we camped out in the truck last night. The beach is right here, you can't see, but I can see like all the lights of the boats out there on the ocean last night. Supposedly the tree of life is right down here. It's dark, I haven't seen it, but we got breakfast cooking in the microwave, thanks to the EcoFlow here. This here is a suggestion someone said, put a pool noodle in the microwave and it'll stop that plate from breaking around and bouncing around and breaking in there. So I did that, plate's not broke, it seems to work. So uh, this is almost done and we're gonna get back in the truck and uh, get ready for the whole next part of our trip. Okay. We have made ham and cheese hot pocket. Uh, this can be good enough for now. Okay, so I'm gonna do up my log uh, while that cools down, and that, that's another question I've gotten. And yes, tow trucks are subject to the same log book and hours of service requirements as all the other trucks. And in this truck, I do run an e-log that's plugged into my uh, data port down there and runs off of this here. That's the thing. Uh, I've said this dash, this uh, rear view cam sucks, and it does. But a bunch of people suggested like uh, all these different camera systems. The reason I have this one is because this right here is my actual dash cam plus my rear view dash cam that's off the back of the truck that's also recording full time plus my truck specific GPS plus is all of my IFTA reporting. Route. Oh, come on. Uh, IFTA reporting. So I've driven that many miles in Oregon. Once we get done with this trip, it'll show how many miles in Washington. See, there it shows in Washington. But this does all my IFTA reporting, mileage and fuel in every state, um, truck GPS, plus dash cam, plus rear dash cam, all in one, which is why I run, oh, and it's my e-log also. So it's everything in one unit, which I cannot stand. Even this up here on the dash, bugs the shit out of me. I want like nothing. So to have this as my GPS or dash cam or whatever, then have some other camera system in here, I I, I don't want that. Uh, I, I like nothing on the dash. Simple. Even having that bugs me, but I have it because it's everything I need all in one deal. So I just wish the backup camera, it, it, it's good other than the backup camera is super delayed and cuts out and that sucks. So if that was good, I would like this, but it's not, so I don't. So we are near, well, kind of near uh, Castle Rock, Washington at a truck stop here and uh, stopped mainly because I had to pee really bad and then grabbed some hand cleaner, some licorice and some chicken while we were there. Uh, this is the first time I had to stop for any sort of snacks or food because my wife loaded me up so good in the truck and with the fridge and the microwave in the back have been totally good to go so we're gonna go get back in the truck uh take our half hour required dot break while we sit here and then keep headed south lights on 
those brakes off. Let's uh, let's go get back on the highway and bounce our way south. Because uh, Washington, you have got some work to do on your roads. Uh, they are they're rough. Um, like I, I'm from California originally, and now we live in Central Oregon, and we'll, we'll complain about the roads in Central Oregon. We're like, man, that, that one road on the other side of town has that one pothole in it. That's ridiculous. They should really fix that. And then we like go on a trip back home to California, and it makes us appreciate the roads we have in Central Oregon. And that is happening uh, with this trip to Washington as well. Uh, it, it's been a long time since I've been on the west side of the Cascades in Washington in a truck. Um, quite a long time. The east side I've done a good bit uh, here recently, but up uh, this I-5 corridor and then um, especially up 101 all the way up to the very end of the road up there where we just were. Holy crap, it is rough. Like crazy rough. Like, And the log trucks up there, like I'm doing like 50 hanging on to this thing, bouncing all over the place. And here they come, and this is empty, like on the way home here. And here comes a log truck, 105,000 pounds, doing like 65 down there. And those guys, are you just see them bouncing around the cab. It's like, slow, slow it down, take it easy. But yeah, it's, uh, the roads up here are leaving a bit to be desired. So, it'll be nice to get back home. Let's, uh, let's go see if we can find us a scale house to get in trouble at, because we haven't done that yet this trip. This guy is not worried about the scale. Oh, because they're closed, that's why. We have lucked out with scales on this trip. Um, this one's closed on the southbound, and uh, yeah, got the bypass. You see in Washington, they have these signs right here and you pass back there you pass a scale pad in the road that gives a rough weight of your truck going down the road not precise at all but a rough weight and then reads your license plate so they know who you are and uh, then you come up to those signs that are just after it right there and they'll tell you truck enter or truck bypass when the scales are open so that uh, guys that um, they run your license plate they check your your csa score your safety score previous inspection histories of the truck, all that stuff like that. And if everything's good and great and you're underweight and all that's fine and you don't have any track record on there, they'll just tell you to bypass, send you right on by and not clog up the scales of trucks that they're not too worried about. If you've got a lot of inspection fails, you've got a bad CSA score, accident history, all this stuff, um, lots of violations, or any of your legal paperwork stuff wise, like registration stuff is not up to date, it'll pull you in for sure. Or if you're heavy, it'll pull you in. And on the way north, when I had that dump truck on the back, I was over 38,000 pounds on my drive axles and 34 is the legal limit. So I thought for sure I was gonna get pulled in because the scale going northbound was open. Went across the, the roadway scale pad license plate reader and it pops up truck bypass scales which surprised the hell out of me because i thought for sure they'd pull me in uh because i'm an oregon-based truck overweight in washington while towing i have a permit but they, i i don't know if they could see that by the license plate reader or not it, the permit is tied to my vin number but either way i thought for sure they'd pull me in i'd have to go in show my permits all that stuff they see it then i'd be good to go but nope got the bypass right on by which very much surprised me and then uh Every other scale on the way up was closed. That one on the way down is closed. So, I mean, not here's the problem now. I'm empty and legal in every way. But maybe since that permit is tied to the VIN number of this truck, when they ran a license plate, they can see it. I, I don't know how that works. Uh, I do know that I recently went through a FMCSA safety audit, which is bigger than like your state, local, scale house, DOT stuff. It, it's the federal uh, auditor calls you up and says, you're getting audited and they go through everything you could imagine they go through uh all of your 
legal stuff as far as your operating authorities and insurances and hours of service records. Like I said earlier, I do run an e-log in this truck. Uh, I'm not required to run e-log. I can do paper logs, but it's easier for me to do e-log um, because uh, I suck at writing and it's a pain in the ass. And then also what I find on these long trips is with the e-log, every time I'd make some little stop to get out and do something, anything, go to the bathroom, run in, grab a snack, grab fuel real quick. On an e-log, I log that as stopped driving. It's on duty, not driving. And paper log, I'm not gonna go through and do a whole log entry every single time. If I stop for lunch or something like that, sure. But all those little stops here and there, get out to go back, check the load, takes 10 minutes, whatever. I don't log that. And by the end of the day, all those stops will add up to, you lost an hour, hour and a half of driving time on your day. So I have found that I can get farther legally on an e-log than I can on paper logs because I'm too lazy to log every little stop on the paper log. So, yes, I run e-logs. No, I'm not required to, but um, it does help me in those situations. So, yeah, but anyway, back to, I, I did go through the FMCSA safety audit, which is Federal Motor Carrier Safety Act. Um, they're the governing body over all things trucking for the federal government. And uh, they, I had to send them in all my e-log stuff, um, all of my medical reports, I had to send in my driver training records, even though I am the owner and driver, I still had to have, because I'm an interstate motor carrier, employer, whatever. Um, any of my drivers, I have to do driver training and driver certifications for the equipment they're gonna be driving. Since I'm a driver, I fall into that category as well. Luckily, I had all that and I did all that because I've, I've, I've been in the trucking business for over a decade of being an owner. So I know all the games, I did all the stuff, and I ended up passing the audit. No violations, no corrections, no nothing. Everything was completely fine. And uh, I would imagine that played in heavily to getting bypassed at the way stations when they're like, yeah, if even the federal guy says he's good, he's probably good. So uh, long, long way of saying that I got a green light through the scales. Done. Woo, steamy. Uh, you go right here on the table. Uh, you should not go in there until you cool down a little bit. So we're, we're gonna let that cool down while we eat that. And yes, I, I did order the tank steps uh, twice now. First time it was like a two month wait for the tank steps that just replaced these straps and the steps as if the tanks were right there and what you used to get in the cab. Two month back order. Waited and waited and waited like a month and a half, or no more than that, it was like three months later. Uh, order canceled, can't get them. So I ordered them from another place and like a month after, can't get them. So if anyone has, the tank steps laying around for a 23 inch Freightliner or Western Star tank. Uh, I could use some. Oh, this poor truck needs a bath. It needs a bath. So freaking bad. But that's winter time, so oh well. Finally back home, parked and done. Truck did absolutely great, flawless the whole way. Very, very happy, happy with how that did. Tow went great, not an issue with that, other than loading it up being muddy, rainy, but smooth, smooth trip the whole way up and back. Uh, green lighted through all the scales. Like I said, no problems. Very, very happy with everything. Just got a very dirty truck now. And while I was gone, remember the storage shed, that I said my wife had took over, but while I was gone, uh, Ethan put in a bunch of work, kicked my wife out of the shed, and then uh, set it all up uh, with our stuff instead. Got a whole bunch of the rigging slings over here, got the big snatch blocks there. He's got a lot of faith in that all thread. Uh, a bunch of extra chain stuff, some shackles, 
binders, spare spare chain hooks and straps and electrical cord and gonna get all like the oils and the coolants and the stuff for the truck and get on one of these shelves too so it's always here ready to top off or do whatever's needed. A bunch of the different attachments all here in one spot now. Uh, the receiver mount winch but there's hitch attachment for little wrecker, axle tech or sorry steer tech forks, hitch adapter, more forks, extended reach um, receiver deals. Those, those are fork receivers for the Zach lift there, but they extend the reach out another, um, uh, that far. And then, you know, more attachment stuff, hitches, parts, fifth wheels, stuff. So, uh, that's going to be really, really nice. Um, should probably like paint it one day, but, uh, yeah. And I just got to get a little bit more gravel put right here. I'll use the dump trailer for that and pack all down. And then the truck pull in, back right in here. Everything we need for it be right there. Very handy and efficient, hopefully. So, anyway, good trip all the way around. Everything went great. Made some money on the deal. Came back all the way home empty, but that was fine because that's why I charge what I do going out because you're not always guaranteed to get something back. So, uh, yeah, good trip. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, see you next time.